Hello, fellow travelers and guests of Magic the Friendly Tavern. This is Will. And today we're on the website mythicspoiler.com uh, to look at the new set, Streets of New Capena spoilers. Uh, that came out today. Uh, we're just going to do a quick rundown of them and see what we think. So starting off, we have Rafine Scheming Seer. It is white, blue, black for a 1-4 flying ward 1. Whenever you attack, target attacking creature can I have X, where X is the number of attacking creatures. To can I have you draw X cards, then discard X cards, put a plus one, plus one counter on that creature for each non-land card discarded this way. So you pump a creature, you get the draw, you get the discard, it's pretty good. Uh, and that's for colors. Also three mana for a 1-4 flying ward, that's, that's decent stats. Uh, next we have Lord Xander, the collector which is seven mana, Grixis colors, uh, for a 6-6. Six, six. Um, whenever Lord Xander, the collector, enters the battlefield, target opponent discards half the cards in their hand, round it down. That's pretty rough. That's that's a good ability. That's pretty good. Uh, whenever Lord Xander attacks, if any player mills half of his or library, round it down. That's also very strong. Uh, but he has no keywords to get him through combat, and he is seven for a 6-6, six, six, so that's not going to happen easily. Uh, whenever he dies, target opponent sacrifices half the non-land permanents they control, round it down. That's mainly what people are going to do, is looping through the graveyard to make people sack permanents. That's a pretty nasty uh, little package there. Uh, next up, we have Zeatora the Incinerator. Zeatora is a 6-mana, engine color, 6-6 six, six flying dragon. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice another creature. When you do, Zeatora the Incinerator deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. And you create three treasure tokens. Sacking a creature just to get three treasure tokens is great. Being able to use it to hit nug anybody or any target, that's actually excellent. This card's this card's gonna be seen a lot in Jund color. So I can imagine up there with Lord Wind Grace and um other sacrifice decks like Corvold. It's not exactly Corvold because it didn't draw you cards, but it is some decent advantage card or a decent advantage. And then it's an alright effect. Its stat line is fine. Uh, next is uh, Jetmir, Nexus of Rebels, in Naya colors. Four mana for a five four. That's already great. Uh, you know, that's above curve. Uh, next, creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and have vigilance, including itself, as long as you control three or more creatures. So if you control this and two other creatures, it'll actually be a six four vigilance. That's pretty good. Uh, plus, your entire team will have plus one, plus zero on vigilance. Then your team gets plus one, plus zero on trample. As long as you control six or more creatures. So you'll have the plus one plus zero for having three. Then you'll get an additional plus one plus zero on trample for having six. And then if you have nine or more, you get plus one plus zero on double strike. So you'll have plus three plus zero and double strike on your entire team if you control nine or more creatures. That's pretty good. That's telling you Naya wants to go wide. Naya really wants to go wide in the set and make lots of tokens. It's a very good token, token uh, commander. Uh, lots to see from this guy. This guy might even see uh, play in standard. He's pretty decent. Uh, next, after that, we have Falco Spara Pact Weaver, which is a 4-mana, 3-3 three, three Flying Trample in Bant colors. Um, it enters the battlefield you put a, with a shield counter on it. Shield counter says if it would be destroyed by damage or a destroy effect, uh, remove the shield counter instead. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. Uh, that's a static effect. You may cast spells from the top of your library by removing a counter from a creature you control in addition to paying its other cost. So you can play cards from the top of your library, but you're going to be losing counters off your creatures. That can lead to a very interesting build and be kind of powerful. Uh, definitely having the option to cast off the top of your library has always been a strong effect. And being able to just trade in or counters for that is pretty good. It's pretty easy to make counters on creatures. Doesn't matter what type of counters. Charge counters would be great for this. Uh, Bank colors is really good and has a lot of synergy with plus one, plus one counters. So there's that. Uh, I would go really good in Atraxa. Uh, it's just decent. Uh, next up, uh, we also have Elspeth the Resplendent, a Planeswalker. She has five mana for five loyalty. Her plus one ability is choose up to one target creature and put a plus one, plus one counter on it. And then put a counter from among flying. First Strike, Lifelink, or Vigilance on it. 
that's pretty decent. I mean, it's up to one creature that way you can plus one it even if you don't have any creatures and you don't want to target your opponent's creature. Our next three is to look at the top seven cards of your library. You can put a permanent with converted mana cost three or less from among them onto the battlefield with a shield counter on it. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Negative three. You get a three drop permanent for free out of the top seven cards of your library. You better believe that's a powerful effect. Is this an overall powerful Planeswalker? I don't think so. Our negative seven ability is our ultimate, and it's uh, create five, three, three white angel creature tokens with flying. Um, that's not all that strong. Um, I am strong enough, but this will see play. But I don't, I don't think it's broken in any way, any way, shape, or form. Do I think this is broken? Uh, do I like the second ability? I do like the second ability a lot. There's a lot of value there. There is. But as for chaining it together for a combo, I don't think you can do that. Um, but it will help with certain decks. Uh, it will definitely help with certain decks. This would probably be better in a mid-range deck than an aggro deck, but time will tell. Uh, next is wiretapping. Five mana for an enchantment. Hideaway five. So when this enchantment enters the battlefield, you'll have the top five cards of your library and exile one of them face down. Put the rest in the bottom of your library and in a random order. Now we've seen hideaway lands. Uh, from Lorwyn, they were a cycle, and you hit away something from the top four cards of your library, and then a trigger would allow you to cast it for free later. So let's see if that's what this does. Whenever you draw your first card during each of your draw steps, draw a card. Okay, so you draw two cards during your draw step. Then if you have nine or more cards in hand, you may play the exile card without paying its mana cost. So you can have nine or more or more cards in your hand on your draw step. It's kind of kind of iffy to do, but it can be done. And you get to play what's ever under this. Unfortunately, hitting the top five cards of your library, you're never going to know what's going to go under this. So it could be less value than working with trying to get the nine cards to make it work. Uh, this enchantment is self-contained. Uh, I don't see it doing much. It's really not that great. Uh, moving on. Um, next list, the adversary is a three-mana planeswalker for three. As will be X. And the copy isn't legendary. And has a starting loyalty of X. Okay, so with casualty, when this comes into play, you can sacrifice a creature with power X. If you do, copy this spell uh, for X. So um, basically, if you if you play this and casualty a three power creature, you'll get another copy of Obnexilis that is not legendary with three loyalty on it, and then you can plus one it or neg it. Um, and keep the original. You can do both in the same in the same turn, and uh, because they're not legendary, they won't cancel each other out. That's kind of interesting. So you kind of get two copies of this. That's decent. Uh, each opponent loses two life for each plus one, unless they discard a card. If you control a demon or devil, you gain two life. Interesting. Throwing some life gain in Arachidos of all colors. Red Black's not really known for its life gain. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, then uh, Neg 2 is to create a 1-1 Red Devil creature with token. When this creature dies, it deals 1 damage to any target. <clears throat> I like this. Most uh, most token effects nowadays are, are negative 3 loyalty, and this one's only negative 2. I mean, it does only start with 3 loyalty, so it is kind of a detriment. But it's not too hard to build up. And those 1-1s one actually trade up for 2-2s two because it deals the 1 extra damage. Uh, you can stack them and, and really get a lot of good combat. Uh, through using those kind of tokens. Uh, you know, it also gives you a little bit of reach. This is not bad. This is going to see a lot of play. Uh, I think Obnixilis Adversary is a very, very good Planeswalker. I think it's much better than Elspeth, and I do believe it's going to see a lot of play. Uh, Urbrask, moving on, is a Praetor, uh, just like we saw Thin Cataxis and Born Clex before. Now we get to see Urbrask. And Urbrask is a heretic Praetor. He actually turned against the other Praetors and help the allies, uh, so they don't like him much. But he's hanging out here on Alcabina, and uh, he has haste. Five mana, four four. Haste at the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library. You may play it this turn. So you get to draw your card per turn, and then on your upkeep, you also exile the top card that you can play this turn. It's kind of like drawing two cards, only you don't get to keep the card advantage. So that card exiles and end a turn, and you can't cast it anymore. So it's kind of risky, but it's not really in a mono red deck because all your spells are low cost anyways. But this is the top end of a burn deck in standard. This would be good in. 
uh, its second ability is really kind of good against control. As you get into each opponent's upkeep, the next time they would draw a card this turn, instead they exile the top card of their library. They may play it this turn. So if your opponent's drawing two cards this turn, say off like a Phyrexian or Rainer or something, you can force them to exile that one draw and then have to cast it that turn or leave it in exile. So it makes them have to have a choice of what spells they're going to cast. And if they can cast both of them, that's fine, but sometimes they can't, and they got to let one go. So it, it kind of helps against control, uh, control especially. But I wish it said if they would draw a card on their turn, exile it instead. Then it would be a powerhouse. Then it would be a busted card, and everybody would want it and want to play it because then it would shut down a lot of draw combos and other shenanigans and commander and other formats as well. It's pretty good. Um, here I'm gonna take a take a quick respite. Uh, we're gonna be looking at Vivian of the Hunt next, and she has six mana for four loyalty. Legendary Planeswalker. Six mana for four loyalty. That's that's kind of a dip, but let's see. She got a plus two. That kind of makes sense then. Uh, you may sacrifice a creature. If you do, search your library for a creature with converted mana cost. Value equal to one plus a sacrificed creature's mana value. And put it on the battlefield and shuffle. This is what we call Birthing Pot Effect. This is after Birthing Pot. Birthing Pot was the first serious card that had this type of effect on it. And it's good. I mean, the Rebels were actually the first creatures to actually do this with the Rebel ability. But when you have it on a stick like this, it's really, really powerful. Like, Birthing Paw is pretty broken. And it can only do it at sorcery speed. And this can only do it at sorcery speed. At instant speed, it's extremely broken. Uh, this is this plus two ability is just nasty. This will allow dual box decks to put together chains and chain out uh, value using her. It's 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 a build around. It's really good. Our plus one is mill five cards and put any number of creature cards milled this way into your hand. That is so powerful. That 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 is extremely powerful too. You're looking at five cards first of all, and then you get to keep all the creature cards from that in your hand. And if not, they're in your graveyard now. In a green black deck, and you want cards in your graveyard, this will be perfect for that. This is really, really high tech stuff. Uh, for its neg one, oh, it's got a neg one on it to make a four four green rhino. That's that's value. Even if you put this out and make two rhinos, you got your you got your money's worth out of it. Six mana for eight power. I see this thing. This thing is going to be a, this thing's going to be in a lot of green decks. Get ready to see a lot of Vivian. Wow, I'm impressed. That is a really good planeswalker. Usually I don't like Planeswalkers, but that, that one's pretty powerful. I'll give it that one. Uh, next is Ledger Shredder. It is two mana for a Bird Advisor 1-3 uh, flying. Whenever a player casts their second spell each turn, it connives, which is draw a card and discard a card. If you discard a non-land card this way, put a plus one, plus one counter on that creature. All right, so the second, the, uh, the, each player casts a second spell their turn. They include you or your opponents. You get to draw and discard. Then if you discard a non-land card, put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature. Pretty decent. Uh, it can get big. It can definitely get big. Um, unfortunately, discarding, when you have, when you if you're land flooded and discarding non-land cards is not what you want to be doing. And you don't, you really want to be pitching them land. So this is kind of a hard, going to be kind of a hard decision tree coming up. Whether you're going to put that counter on that creature or not. By discarding something that might be more valuable to you later down the road. But uh, then again, you know, those are those are kind of choices we've got to make in Magic. Next is Cut of the Prophets, which is two black and an X for a sorcery. You may draw X card and lose X life. That's pretty decent. But it has casualty three. As you cast this spell, you may sacrifice a creature of power three or greater when you do copy this spell. So if you put three mana into it, that's five mana to draw three cards at sorcery speed. That's terrible. But the fact is you can sacrifice a three drop, draw six cards, and lose six life, and one creature. That's that's more decent. And you get two spells on the stack for storm count. It's I'm gonna have to see this card in action. I can't really, really tell you off the top of the head 
whether it's going to be anything bro broken or not, but it seems good. Seems good. Uh, next, we're going to go to Jaxus the Troublemaker. Four mana, two, three. Legendary creature. Boy, I hope his abilities make up for that stat line. Four mana, four, two, three is not where you want to be. Okay, you can pay one and a red to discard a card like the old uh, spell sifters, savers. Uh, so pay one, pay red, tap it, discard a card. Create a token that's a copy of another creature you control against haste. And when this creature dies, draw a card. Sacrifice at the beginning of next instep. Activate only as a sorcery. Well, when I said the ability would have to be pretty good to make for a four mana two three, well that ability is. That ability is, is really good. And then it has a blitz ability. If you cast this spell where it's blitz cost against haste, and when this creature dies, draw a card. You can put it in a turn for two mana, but it sacrifices at the beginning of the end step. So you get a one shot with it with haste to use this ability for two mana, for three mana altogether. That's nifty. This card's good. This card's great. Uh, this card's going to see some play. I, I like it. I don't know where. Uh, it's kind of a minor minor kiki jiki. It, it can, you know, not replace it, but do similar things to it. But you got to discard a card uh, and pay mana. That's what's keeping it back. It, it could have been better, but they were playing it safe. It's all right. It's decent. With the magic cards we have nowadays, if you're not playing the old broken stuff, it's decent. Uh, next, we have Devil, Devilish Valet. It's a three mana one three. Is a trample haste alliance. When another creature enters the battlefield in your control, double double devilish valet's power until end of turn. So a trample haste on a three mana one three is not doing anything. But when another creature enters the battlefield, you can double its power until end of turn. So if you can get it this a pump spell, maybe pump it plus three, so it has four power, and then play a creature, then it can have eight power of trample and haste. That's good. That's decent. If you can do something like that, that's that's what you want to be doing. Uh, so this is a limited only, probably rare, but it's all right. Uh, then we have Broker's Ascendancy, which was spoiled earlier, but we'll go over it anyways. It is Bant, uh, green, white, and a blue, three, enchantment. At the beginning of your end step, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control and a loyalty counter on each planeswalker you control. Believe it or not, this is pretty busted. That, that's each creature and each, uh, each planeswalker. Gaining an additional plus one, plus one counter and loyalty each in step. If this goes two or three turns, you could get out of hand. Out of hand bad. Badly. This this is a good card. It's not it's not the best, but it's good. And it is at your in step and not at your upkeep. So you at least get one round of counters out of it as soon as you play it. So it's good as soon as it hits the field. There is no waiting around. It is not a do nothing enchantment. It does something immediately. So that's pretty good. Uh, next on our list, we have five lands that are a cycle. Uh, these are the triumphs. Uh, I'm not sure what we're going to call them yet, but they are the triumphs because they they tap each additionally for three different types of mana. See, they are Plains, Island, and Swamp on the Raffine's Tower over here. See, it's Raffine's Tower, but it is a Plains, Island, and Swamp, which means it's fetchable. It does enter the battlefield tap. But you can cycle it away to draw a card by discarding, paying three mana and discarding it. So these are always relevant. Like you can get away with running one of in your deck. I don't care how competitive it is. You can run one. I wouldn't run more than that, especially in five color, uh, because they come into play taps and slow you down. But running one of as a backup sounds fine, especially in a three color deck. Sounds good. Uh, this might be replacing the irrigated farmland in my deck, actually. On my Sharoom deck. Uh, so this land I do want from this set. But I don't expect them to get too far out of hand. Because on price. Because they do come into play tap. Uh, then we have a cycle of charms. And these were our spoiled earlier. But we'll go over them again. Obscura charm is S for colors. And three for an instant. Choose one. Return target multicolored permanent card. With mana value three or less from your graveyard. To the battlefield tap. That's resurrection. Multicolored permanent, three or less. That's a lot of restrictions. Counter target instant or sorcery spell. I'm already liking this spell more. Destroy target creature or planeswalker with mana value three or less. This is a pretty good charm. This is decent. Destroying a creature or planeswalker, three mana or less. Great. Counter target instant or sorcery spell. In case you don't have any creatures to destroy, great. Uh, get some back from the graveyard. You cannot, you cannot complain. 
that is a pretty decent charm for an uncommon. Next up is uh, Mastrio's charm. It is Grixis colors, three for an instant. Look at the top five cards of your library. Put one of those cards in your hand and the rest in your, into your graveyard. I love the dig. I love the fact that it fills my graveyard up with four cards. I love both of those facts. That's a pretty powerful effect. Next effect is each opponent loses three life and you gain three life. <laughs> well, what you don't understand is the more, the more opponents you have, the more life this will take, but you still only gain three life. You don't gain as much as you took, or else that would actually be a good ability. This ability, as far as it is, three life is negligible. Even against three other opponents, it's meh. It never uses this effect. I will probably never use that effect. But I'll give you a dollar for every person you burn out. If they're at three life and you hit them with a charm and burn them out of the game, well, we'll talk about that dollar. I'm not gonna be making any promises, but you might get a dollar. <laughs> uh, then it deals five damage to certain creature planeswalker. For three mana, that's decent. For three mana, five damage is alright, but the rest other abilities just don't float it enough. It just doesn't make it really one playable. I don't know, just not something I see a lot of people playing. But that dig is good. That dig is good. Impulse is a good card. I don't know. I could see this setting something up. Maybe if there is a is a resurrection deck in standard, we'll have to see if that comes to fruition. Next up is Riveteer's Charm. It's Jun Colors, three for an instant. Choose one. Target opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker. They control with the highest mana value among creatures or planeswalkers they control. Now, if they're if they're uh, tied, you get to choose. Um, this ability is all right. Especially since it hits their highest mana value target, so it usually takes out what you want it to. But sometimes this can miss. Sometimes they got two two drops out there, and one you need really off the field for them to quit gain an advantage, like a Bob or Dark Confidant, as it will, as you will. And the other two drop you don't care about, and they just sacrifice the two drop you don't care about. So this can't miss. That's not a super great effect. It's all right. It's all right. It gets around hexproof. Gets around indestructible. Because you're targeting the opponent, not the creature, and you're making them sacrifice. Uh, the next is exile top three cards of your library until your next end step. You may play those cards. Pretty good dig. Digs three deep. Uh, but they're exiled. If you don't play them by end of turn, they stay exiled. And three mana is a lot for that kind of effect. Uh, we know this from um, impu the Impulsive Draw spell. I can't think of the name of it. But it exiles three cards. And you may play on that turn for three, and it didn't see much play. Uh, then we can exile target players like Graveyard. Great utility, but not a lot of Graveyard decks running around as standard. But if you're looking for Graveyard, Grave, Grave Hate, a little bit of sacrifice, and then maybe some way to accelerate into the top three cards of your library late game, this is a charm for you. I think it's okay. For an uncommon, it's all right. Uh, then the Cap Ready charm has Naya colors for an instant. And you can choose one. It deals damage equal to the number of creatures you control to a creature or planeswalker. That can be a lot. That can be a little. It's just telling you Nia wants to go wide. Uh, it's a hit or miss ability because it works on the variance of how many creatures you have. If you're facing down a 5-5 and they killed all your creatures but one, that effect's not going to be very good. But if you're already winning the game with like 10 creatures out there and they happen to slap a 2 doo down you don't like, well, this card will work for you. Uh, the next ability is creatures you control get plus one plus one and gain trample till end of turn. Minor combat effect. Not really worth three mana. It's alright. Trample's okay. Uh, this last ability is the one I see used the most often, especially in draft, which is create two one one green and white citizen creature tokens, especially at instant speed. Creating tokens is good, especially when you get two of them uh, for one card. Uh, so it's worth one card whole card advantage. Because the token's only worth half a card in card advantage. So you, so it's it's all right. Still weak. I uh, still say the Esper Charm is the best one out of all of them. The Obscura Charm. Uh, next is the Broker's Charm. It's in Bant Colors. Three for an instant. Choose one. Target creature you control gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. It deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker in abundance control. So it pumps the creature and that creature deals damage equal to its power to a creature or planeswalker. Now, this is what we would call a fight or bite effect. A fight effect is when the creatures deal damage to each other. A bite effect is when the creature just deals its damage to the creature. So, in the fight effect, they, they cancel it. They take each other out. 
in some cases. Some cases your creature would be bigger and survive, but in most cases they would they would they would can't they would take each other out. With a bite effect, there is no retaliation. You just deal the damage. So there there is no there is no dealing damage back. Your creature will always survive that. So this is a really good effect. But it does rely on you having a creature. That first ability cannot target unless you have a creature you control. Keep that in mind. So it's variance, but it is good variance in green. Uh, next, you can destroy target enchantment. That'd be so much better if we could destroy target artifact or enchantment, but it only destroys an enchantment. Last effect is draw two cards. Divination is three mana, sorcery, draw two cards. This is instant divination. It's much better. Drawing two cards is a mode that's probably going to be used a lot. Not a bad charm. Moving on, uh, we have Nimble Larcenist. It is an Esper colored 2 1 flyer, uh, Bird Rogue. It is uh, three color or three mana, 2 1 flying. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals her hand. You may choose an artifact, instant, or sorcery card from it. Exile that card. So you get to get one of their instant sorceries or artifacts from the hand and exile it. That's decent. That's that's like a discard on a on a stick, only it's better because it didn't go to the graveyard. They'll never get that card back. It's just exiled from, from ever. Forever. Uh three mana for a two one flyers, man. But it's about a pawn par. Especially with an ability that wrecks their hand. That's that's probably gonna see some play if the deck if a Ezra deck forms. It's alright. I mean it's I kinda wish it was like a, a two two or maybe a three one, but it's alright. It's alright. Especially in uncommon. That's a good, pretty strong uncommon so far. Uh, next is a little chat. It's an instant casualty one. So as you play this spell, you may sacrifice a creature with power one or greater if you do copy this spell. Look at the two, two, two look at the top two cards of your library. Put one on your hand and the other on your bottom of your library. Oh my goodness! And say you play play the the nimble arsonist out and it gets a little behind, and then later you just sacrifice the nimble arsonist of this. You look at the top four cards of your library, you put two of them in your hand and the other two on the bottom. That's pretty good. That's decent. I mean, you do it two at a time, but that's still pretty decent. That's a pretty good dig for just giving up a, a irrelevant creature. I like this uh, little chat. I, I think this is going to see a lot of play. This is a pretty good spell for an Uncommon. Uh, Rumor Gatherer. Uh, we're looking at a three mana, two one. Alliance, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, scry one. If this is the second time this ability resolved this turn, draw a card instead. So every time a creature enters the battlefield, you get to scry one. That's its alliance ability. But if this is the second time this is resolved, you draw a card instead of scrying one, that's great. That's great. I uh, just play um have this out on the field. And then play your Cabretti Charm, getting two one one green and white citizen tokens, and bam, you draw a card. That's decent. You scry a card. Actually, you scry one, then you draw a card. So you get both. That's that's pretty decent. I like that. Rumor Gatherer is pretty nice. Two one for three mana is pretty eh. But what can you do? Uh, next is the Disciple, Discipline Duelist. It is a Bant Colors. It is also a three mana two one, but it has double strike. Double strike always keeps power and toughness down. Because a creature with double strike is hard to deal with. Double strike is one of the best keywords there are, and it does does double the damage. And because it's first strike damage and regular damage, it makes combat rough, especially for your opponent. Um, it enters with a shield counter on it too. Uh, if it would be dealt damage or destroyed, remove the shield counter from it instead. A double striker with protection. This thing might see some play. This this is pretty. This is a lot. There's a lot going on with this card. Um, I'd like to try and run it, but we'll see where we end up. It's not bad. Not bad at all. Next, we have Light em Up, which is Casualty 2 for a Sorcery, 2 mana. It deals 2 damage to a creature or Planeswalker, but you can sack a creature with power 2 or greater. If you do, you can copy the spell, so you can get 4 damage out of this spell by sacking a 2-2. Two, two, two. That's decent. Decent enough. Uh, definitely a Nio. If you got tokens laying around, this could be good enough. Um, nothing to truly write home about, but it's all right. Uh, next, we're going to talk about Halo Fountain. Halo Fountain is a three mana artifact in white. 
that you can pay it, untap a tap creature you control, create a 1-1 one, one green white citizen creature token. You can pay ta two and tap it to, to, to untap two tap creatures you control to draw a card. That's not bad. And you're untapping the creatures, but somehow you got to figure out how to tap them. You got to get them tapped for you to be able to target them to untap them. And then you get your effects because that untap the creature is part of the cost. If you haven't noticed, it's part of the cost. It's on the other side of the colon. And then for four or five white mana, tap it, untap 15 tap creatures you control, you win the game. This is an alt win condition. People are going to be trying to win through this. It is very color intensive. We have five white um, pips on the Halo Fountain, but I do think that makes it a little fair. Uh, untapping the creatures, that's going to be fun uh, watching people learn that. Um, interesting card all around. We're moving on. Uh, definitely probably not going to see any standard play, but might. You never know. Uh, life gain decks are a thing. Next is uh, an offer you can't refuse. It's one blue for an instant. Counter target non creature spell. Its controller creates two treasure tokens. I love it. It just says it's one blue mana to counter target non creature spell. You give them a little bit of advantage, but it's not card advantage. You ramp them by two treasures. Could be dangerous. Worth the risk. This is our risk, our reward card. Uh, when it works out, it works out great. When it doesn't, oh, I can hurt you. I'd run it. I'd run it all day long. This is you're going to be seeing this card, and it's and it's got a cool flavor. Next is incriminate. Choose two target creatures controlled by the same player. The player sacrifices one of them. So they all will always pick the worst one, the worst one for you. This card's limited fodder. It's just not that great. I wouldn't be running this card unless you're up against a hexproof and destructible deck and just need an effect like this. Uh, at least it gives you it lets you. You know, but it won't get around hexproof because you got to target the creatures. I don't know. I just hate this spell. This spell is bad. This spell, on the other hand, is good. Strangle is one red mana for a sorcery. It deals three damage to a creature or planeswalker. Flame Slash was one red mana for a sorcery. Deal four damage to a creature or planes or or a planeswalker. If Flame Slash saw a lot of play, this will see a lot of play. Three damage is nothing to scoff at. And one mana. This is what red decks need. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't hit a player, which would be nice. But there are so many burn spells out there that already hit a player. They're just not printing anymore. They just really aren't because they can't. They can't really. There's not enough design space to improve on them. You know, we have the best burn spells in, 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 that they can make already. So why try and build on that? So now they're not making them where they don't target players. And that's to keep the red deck from being so viable. When the, when the red deck has viable burn spells to the face to take out their opponent and have that extra reach to make it past turn four, then they are deadly. But with the with the cap on spells that hit players in the face for cheap, red decks can stay viable without overrunning us. And grinders, tournament grinders, love red decks, red deck wins. And it's because it's simple math and each game is over by turn four regardless. They know if they won or lost the match already, and they can move on to the next one. Allows them to grind out more games in one setting than if they were using a complicated Storm deck. Uh, so let's see if uh, this card can bring Mono Red back. His Strangle is pretty good. Don't underestimate this card. You will be seeing it. Uh, next is Gala Greeters. Gala Greeters is two mana for a 1-1 one -one Alliance. Whenever another creature enters a battlefield under your control, choose one that hasn't been chosen this turn. Oh, you get three abilities. Uh, put a plus one, plus one counter on Gala Greeters. Create a tap treasure token, so you can't use it right away. So that keeps you from ramping too hard. Uh, and you gain two life. Now, if you have something like Amulet of Vigor, that treasure token coming in play on tap, you can loop this. This can become broken. Uh, Gala Greeters, keep an eye on this card. This this is a nice card. Uh, first of all, you have three, three different creatures coming to play. You get all three of those abilities. Slap a plus one, plus one counter on it. Create a tap treasure token and gain two life. That's pretty good value. Gala Greeters might do something in the future. Maybe not. Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, there's Murder. Three mana destroy target creature. We have better kill spells than standard already. We have better kill spells than every other format. It's Murder. It's there for limited. And limited only. It's It's been downgraded to a common. Uh, nothing to write home about. Moving on. 
Courier's briefcase is one in a green for an artifact treasure. So it counts as a treasure. When it enters a when it enters a battlefield, create a one one green and white citizen creature token. Then you can tap to sack it to add one mana of any color. You know, that's not bad. Uh, get a one one and you can make a add a color for two green mana. That's not bad. Or for one color and a green. You can pay five you can pay Wooberg, which is one of each color for five. Tap it, sacrifice it, and draw three cards. And eh. he could be doing so much better, doing so much more with five Wooberg mana than drawing three cards, but it's all right. It's 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 there. Next we have getaway car, which is a vehicle. It is three. It is a four three when it is a creature. Haste. Uh getaway attacks or blocks. Return up to one target creature that crewed at this turn to the owner's hand. That can actually give you value. If you crew it with something with an ETB ab ability, when it enters the battlefield ability, crew the car, bounce it, replay the replay the creature, and get that ETB ETB ability again, that's pretty good value. And it only crews for one. A four three for three that crews for one is not bad. I mean vehicles aren't like vehicles aren't like the end all be all broken cards in magic. But I like the flavor of them, and I liked it when they introduced them. I think they could start making them a little more powerful, but it's hard to hard to balance a card like this. And they don't want another looter scooter incident. Uh, if you don't know, um, Smuggler's Copter, when it came out, was dubbed the looter scooter, and it was broken, busted beyond it. it, it and Articura were in the same deck, and it was just... Actually, they were in all decks because they were colorless artifacts, and we ran in all decks. And they were just showing up left and right. I think in the first the first tournament they had of it, every single deck in the top eight had four copies of Smuggler's Copter in it. It was that ubiquitous. So let's talk about this card, Chrome Cat. Three mana, four, three, two. When Aaron's Battlefield, scribe one. It's all right. It's decent. Nothing right on the belt. Pillar Common for limited. Uh, then we have this land cycle. They enter the Battlefield tap. They produce two colors. They are not fetchable. And then you can pay four, tap them, sacrifice them to draw a card. Meh. They're, they're uh, cheap versions of the lands that don't come into play tap. That tap for two colors and, a, and cause you one life that you can sacrifice for free to draw a card. Now those, car, those are rares and they're worth a lot of money because they're free to sacrifice for the card draw. Uh, these are four to, these are five mana. Because you've got to tap this, this land plus two uh, colorless, plus the two colors that the land produces, that's that's not very much value. You're tapping out five mana with two of it being colored to draw a card. Uh, you don't want to be doing that. These are good for limited. They're good for casual decks. If you're if you're in a casual commander, they'd be great in your deck. These are not for com the competitive scene. Uh, next, we have our full art uh, lands that were... Uh, Showcase and they are beautiful. There are a lot of them. I'll quickly scroll through. You can look at all these. Um, down here, these are just these are the showcase frames. These are the different frames for the cards that we already just went over. Uh, there's actually no more new cards in here, or there might be old one. I'm gonna double check because I'd hate to say that then there are. But no, it's the same cards we went over. They just look a little bit different. And these right here are those Gala, Gala guys I told you to look out for, the, Ga the Gala Greeters. They are printing them uh, with different art in each different language that Watsi prints in, which I think there's 10 or 15 languages Watsi prints in, so there's, there's quite a few of them. Yeah, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 of them, as you can see. Those are pretty cool. Uh, there's the triumphs with their, with their great backgrounds. These are uh, the full art. And that's it today for New Capina. Treats of New Capina. Oh, wait a minute. Now we have some more. These are the commander deck. The commander, I forgot, was spoiled as well. So these will be in the commander decks, but not the new set. Just the commander decks being released with the new set. So we have Kamiz, Obscura Oculus, with a 4 mana 2 4. Whenever you attack, target attacking creature can't be blocked this turn. It connives, which means draw X cards and discard X cards and uh, equal to the connive. 
Uh, then choose another attacking creature with lesser power. That creature gains double strike at the end of the turn. Alright, so this is an Esper commander that cares about attacking. In the history of Esper, Esper has never cared about attacking. It's either artifacts or um, either cares about artifacts or control. I don't know what this thing is doing in, in Esper trying to uh, care about attacking, but it's different. Uh, this will definitely be not a general you see very often, but one that would be fun to build around because this is not something Esper really does very often. Uh, is attack. I never attack. I don't, I run seven creatures in my Esper deck, and I never swing. Um, then we have Anilo the Painter, which is Grixis. He's three mana for a 1-3 Death Touch. Uh, the first instant or sorcery spell you cast each turn has casualty two, which means you can sack a creature with two power or greater if you do copy that spell. That could be dangerous. That could be dangerous. First instant or sorcery spell you cast each turn has casualty two. Copying it, yeah, that could that's 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 a uh, that's what we call card advantage. That gives you a free cast on a spell, basically, and free casting's good, and that's card advantage when you get when you get free stuff like that. Uh, next is Henzi Toolbox Torre, which is gun colors, three mana for a three three. Each creature spell you cast, the mana value four or greater, has blitz. The blitz cost is equal to its mana cost, so you can. Four greater creatures come down for their mana cost, but they have haste, and you sacrifice them at the end of the end step. And if they would they if they would leave the battlefield, you draw a card. Uh, the blitz cost costs one less for each time you cast your commander from the zone from the uh, command zone in this game. Okay, so first time he doesn't really give a uh, give a uh, cost reduction. Uh, if he dies and then goes back to the command zone, and you recast him. Then your blitz cost on your four greater creatures costs one less. If you can get it costing two or less and blitz out some nasty creatures, I can see that being a problem. I can see this really stacking up. Uh, this is an interesting one. It's kind of wonky, but I think it's going to be good. Uh, then we got Kit Kanto, Mayhem Dima. She is four mana and Naya colors. She is a 3 3. When she enters the battlefield, create a 1 1 white green citizen creature token. At the beginning of combat on each player's turn, you may tap two untapped creatures you control. When you do target creature, target player controls get plus two, plus two, you can trample until end of turn. Goad that creature. Goad means uh, the creature can't attack you or planeswalkers you control, but it must attack this turn. So basically what she's doing is she's allowing you to tap tokens to uh, basically dictate combat on other people's turns. So on other people's turns, you can say, well, that creature gets a plus two, plus two, trample, and can't attack me, but must attack this turn if able. Uh, so you make them attack somebody else, and you, I guess you can try and point out who the threat at the table is and try and get them to attack that, maybe do some politicking. This is definitely a political commander. Uh, could be good. Could be good. Uh, next is Pure the Pulverizer, which is in Bant Colors. The four mana 3-3. Three, three. It is a Rhino. I love Rhinos. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, put a shield counter on target creature. That includes itself. Uh, if it would be dealt damage or destroyed, remove the shield counter instead. Okay, so it protects it from dying. Uh, whenever it attacks, target creature you control gains trample and gets plus X, plus X is a end of turn. Where X is the number of different kinds of counters and one permanence you control. The more counters and one permanence you control, the more plus X plus X this guy gives uh, to the target attacking creature. Whenever he attacks, you can have another, you can either have another target attacking creature or you can target him or whatever. Let's say you have three creatures out there and two of them have uh, counters on them, any type of counters, charge counters, plus one plus one counters, life link counters, uh, they'll get plus two plus two. So this thing could be swinging in as a 5-5. Five five. He'll swing in as a 4-4 four four because he counts his own counter. Uh, because he comes in and play with a shield counter. That you can put on him or something else. Uh, this is a decent commander. Kind of utilitarian. Uh, kind of basic. But what Bant really wants to do is be swinging anyways. So it kind of helps there. Um, I'm not sure. We're going to have to see the rest of the set to see how this goes. But these are pretty fine commanders. Uh, so far I'm liking this set. Uh, please leave a comment uh, out at the bottom telling me what you think of this set. Again, I'm Will from Magic the Friendly Tavern. 
as always, happy pack pulls and happy games.